Hello ladies and gentle ladies and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial for Forge 1.20 and in this tutorial we are going to be covering how we can add an item storage inside of our block entity. So let's go ahead and get started. So firstly you want to do the usual things and you want to create your block entity, you want to create the block, you want to create the item, all of that stuff. I've gone ahead and I've done all of that already. So as you can see I've just got a basic block entity here. I've overridden the load and save additional since we're going to need those and I've just added the main mod ID tag in both of those. And in the block class I've put in a very basic use method where we just check if it's server side. We get the block entity, we get the item in the player's hand, and then if the stack is empty, what we're going to want to do is we're going to get the item from the block entity and give it to the player. And if the stack is not empty, then we're going to set the item in the block entity to the player's hand. And that's obviously assuming that the block entity has space to store that item. Okay, so we'll start with the block entity. And first of all, we're going to want an item stack handler. So we're going to want a private final item stack handler. And we can call this whatever we want. I generally just call this the inventory. And we just set that equal to a new item stack handler. And you can give that a size in here, which will be the number of slots which that can take. And if you come into the item stack handler, you can also see that you can give it a default set of stacks if you want as well. And yeah, in fact, we can just leave that blank because that does default us to a size of one anyways. So we don't actually have to put the size of one in there. However, just so that you can see how you would set it to a different size, I'm going to leave that size of one in there. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to add some curly braces on this just as if it was a method and what this does is this creates an anonymous inner class of this item stack handler and all we want to do in here is we want to override the on contents changed method and you want to leave the super in there but what you do need to do is say example item cap block entity dot this dot set changed and what that will do is when the contents of the item stack handler are changed it will call this on contents changed method and what that does is it will tell our block entity that there is a change made and that the block entity needs to go ahead and save that change into the world data Okay, fantastic. And obviously you can make an, uh, your custom implementations of an item stack handler if you wish. What I personally do in my own mod is I just have a class that extends item stack handler and it takes in a block entity as the first parameter. And then I can simply just call block entity dot set changed, meaning that I can just do, for example, um, it would be something like custom item stack handler right, something like that, you would still give it your size and all you would do is pass in this before the size and, you know, you'd have something like that. But we can't do that because I'm not going to create that class, but that's what you could do if you wanted to. The next thing you're going to want to do is just below that, we're going to want a private final lazy optional and this will be of type item stack handler and we can call this just an optional is what I generally call it. And this will just be equal to lazy optional dot of, and we can say supplier of this dot inventory. Effectively, what this does is it creates a lazy for our item stack handler, which we can later then invalidate when our block entity needs to be invalidated. And that just means that we can always access this. And what we need to do next is we need to override a method so we need to override the method get capability. Now you see there are two get capability methods. We are going to want the first one for this tutorial, the one without a direction. If you want your item item stack handlers to be on different sides, right? So if you want sided inventories such as hoppers, furnaces, things like that, then you're going to want the second one. And we'll talk about that in more detail in a future tutorial. But for now, we're just going to have this be more like a chest 
where it's all on the same side. So we just want to override that get capability method. And instead of returning the super, we're first going to want to say if cap is equal forge capabilities dot item handler, then we're going to say return this dot optional dot cast. And what that does is it grabs our optional that we have up here. And that is the optional of our item stack handler. So of our inventory, and it casts that to this capability here, which is the item handler capability in this specific instance. Now, if that's not the case, we just want to return the super. So super dot get capability and pass in the cap. You can obviously one liner this if you want. So you could do, for example, return cap is equal forge capabilities dot item handler. Then you just return this dot optional dot cast or super dot get capability cap. And in this specific instance, I'm going to do it like that since we only have our single capability in here. But if you had several capabilities such as energy and fluids, etc., then you would want to go ahead and keep it as the if statement way because you don't want nested ternary operators. And yeah, obviously this is fine just having the single one since that's still easy to read. Anyone can understand what's going on there. The next thing we want to do is validate our item stack handle as I suggested we do earlier. So the simplest way to do this is just override the invalidate caps method. You want to keep that super dot invalidate caps method and you just want to do this dot optional dot invalidate. Nice and simple. Okay, let's talk about saving and loading this data. So by default capabilities don't appear or at least from my experience, they generally don't seem to actually save and load by default. So we actually have to go ahead and do that ourselves, which is fairly simple. So we'll start off with saving and then we will show the loading. So we want to do tutorial mod data dot put and we're going to give it a name. Generally, I like to just call this the inventory. And all we're going to do is say this dot inventory dot serialize mbt and that will basically just convert this inventory into an mbt using list tags and etc like that and that just means we don't have to manually go ahead and serialize that ourselves which is great so that's how we save it nice and simple and to load it you can guess it's pretty much exactly the same so we just want to do this dot inventory dot deserialize mbt tutorial mod data dot git compound inventory okay fantastic let's actually just check that our serialized mbt does return an compound tag which yeah you can see here that it gives us a compound tag meaning that we can use git compound to get it back and that's pretty much it for saving items inside of our block entity now as i said in the previous tutorial this will not sync to the clients this is still all on the server so if we do want to go ahead and sync it to the client we'll have to override our syncing stuff now i'm not going to do that in this tutorial because once again that is fairly complicated or not complicated, but there's just a lot to go through in terms of the different ways that you could achieve that effect. And we also don't really need it for this tutorial since we're not going to be displaying anything through rendering or GUIs or anything like that. That's all going to be in the following tutorials. I will, however, probably have the next tutorial be actually the same thing as this but i will show you how you can sync it to the client and then the tutorial after that we will talk about menus and screens and then probably rendering all of which will use syncing as of the uh, next tutorial will be but yeah that should be pretty much it for this one we will however want to go ahead and create some methods that allow us to access certain data that we have in here so for example, one of the methods we'll probably want to do is actually go ahead and make a method to get our item stack handler. So we'll just say that's a public item stack handler get inventory and we'll just return this dot inventory. Fairly simple. We can also actually make methods to get from that item stack handler rather than having to use this getter every single time. For example, you may want a public item stack get stack in slot and if you just pass in an int slot there 
we can just return this dot inventory dot get item stack in slot slot now for our specific instance we only have one slot so we can simplify this method to get rid of that in slot and just pass in zero since obviously in java arrays or lists start at the index zero so we can just pass in the slot zero and that will just get that for us and we can just return actually we can call this get stack rather than get stack in slot or if you want to make it even more obvious you just say get item and we can also do the reverse so we can also go public void set item item stack stack and obviously normally you would call this set stack in slot and it would be in slot item stack item stack item stack stack and you would just do this dot inventory dot set stack in slot slot stack but once again we don't need to do that so we can just remove the in slot we can remove the stack in slot replace it with set item and set the slot here to zero and that just simplifies our code a little bit as we will need it in the block class you can also make a method to get the lazy optional if you would rather have a more functional approach of accessing this item stack handler. Maybe you're worried about it being invalid at the certain time you want to access it. You can use your lazy optional and basically just it's it works as if it's an actual optional so you can map it and you can use like if present and all of those optional things. So you would just create a very simple method so a public lazy optional and you can actually just do get optional and I believe IntelliJ should create it for us and boom that's basically the method you would need and if you want to be kind of more generic about it you could do an item I item handler uh, actually we can't because our optional doesn't quite work like that but we could change this to an i item handler there and that wouldn't actually cause us any problems by doing that but i'm going to leave it as we had it since i think that's perfectly fine now one final thing i will do is actually override the remove method or the on remove method of the block class and you're going to want to make sure you leave this super dot on remove in there and all i'm going to do is i'm going to add the uh, or I'm going to drop the uh, block entities inventory. So if not level dot is client side, then I'm going to grab the block entity. So block entity B E is equal level dot get block entity at the pause. If B E is instance of our example item cap block entity, then we're just going to get the inventory. So item stack handler inventory is equal block entity dot get inventory and basically what you will want to do is inventory dot get slots and you want to do a for i so we'll do for index and you'll get the stack so item stack stack is equal inventory dot get stack in slot stack or get stack in slot index i mean and you want to do inventory dot get stack in slot and give it the index then we all all we want to do is spawn an item entity so we'll just say bar entity is equal to new item entity we're going to pass in whatever it wants here so hopefully it does tell us so it wants a level it wants three doubles and then it wants an item stack so we can first say the level it wants three doubles which is going to be the position so pause.get x pause.get y and pause.get z and then you want to give it the item stack so stack and let's just make sure we go ahead and add 0.5 to all of these so that it spawns in the center and not in a corner and then what we want to do is we want to do level dot add fresh entity entity and you can also give it a random velocity if you want to do that as well inside of here you want to do your logic for extracting or inserting or whatever you want to do i've already done the logic here so i'll briefly go through it so we first get the inventory if the stack is empty we check if it's empty first if it's empty we just say it's empty and we return if it's not empty in the inventory 
then we're going to extract using inventory extract item. If they're crouching, then we're gonna extract the entire slot limit of that stack. Else we're just gonna extract one and we'll simulate as false because we want it to actually extract, not just simulate an extraction. And then we just set the player's hand to that extracted stack. Now, if the stack was not empty, so AKA if there was something in the player's hand, then we once again get the inventory and we're going to copy our stack in the hand. We're going to set the count to one and we're going to grab the leftover. So we're going to do that by inserting that stack of size one into the inventory. And that gives us the leftover of what was not able to be inserted. And then all we can do down here is we can once again copy the stack and this will be the remainder that gets set into the player's hand. So with this, we set the count to the remainder's count negative one because we're setting the insert count to one here. And then we just grow that by whatever the leftover was. And by doing that, uh, we can get the correct remainder that should go into the player's hand. And we just set that there. One thing we can do actually, which I have just noticed is since we're getting the inventory in both of those, we can just do that up there instead. And that should be pretty much it. So we can run the game and I've already done that. So here it is. Now if I place down my block and we can right click it with an item and you'll see it inserts. Now, obviously you wouldn't want it to do this in creative mode. So Oh, so all you would need to do is in here, you would somewhere have a creative mode check uh, that wouldn't change the actual stack count that you insert. But I'm not going to do that just because I think it's easier to test these kind of things in creative and then do them all in creative. So I'm just going to leave it so that it works in both creative and survival. And you just right click it and you see it's inserting them all. Now, if we try to insert a different item, that won't work, see nothing happens, and you know, all these different items, none of them will work. Now, if we right click it, you see it brings out one, and if we shift right click it, you'll see it brings out all of the rest that were in there. See, that works. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, please do be sure to give us a like and subscribe as well. If you really found it useful, then you can join my Patreon, which is linked in the description. And that just helps to support me continue making these tutorials. And also if you have any problems, my Discord server is linked in the description below as well. And you can ask out uh, questions there or you can just hang out. So yeah, that's it. And I'll see you in the next tutorial on syncing this data to the client because currently none of this will appear on the client side if we try to say render these items or shown them in a GUI, they wouldn't exist on the client. It would just be an empty inventory. And that's the same for all of the tutorials we've done so far on block entities. So that's probably gonna be the next tutorial. We'll cover how we can sync that to the client using the three different methods. And um, yeah, that is it. So I'll see you then. Goodbye.